If you want to get into plane spotting, then you need to watch this video. Plane spotting is a fun way to photograph and learn about airplanes. If you happen to live in or near a major city, then you have access to hundreds of different aircraft and paint schemes, which are known as livery in the aviation world. So, what do you need to get going? For starters, a good DSLR or mirrorless camera with a long lens. I can't stress this enough, there's almost no such thing as too much zoom when it comes to plane spotting. At a minimum, you'll need a 100mm zoom, and most plane spotters agree that 200mm is a good place to start. And if you're wondering about crop sensor versus full frame, plane spotters actually benefit from crop sensors since they multiply zoom by what we call the telephoto effect. Finally, if you just bought a camera with an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, don't worry. There's still a lot you can do and learn, but trust me, it won't be long before you'll find yourself shopping for a longer lens. Once you have your camera and lens, here's a few other things you might want to bring. A tripod, not really necessary unless you're shooting at night or plan to do video. A backpack to keep all your gear in, a water bottle, it gets hot out there and you don't want to dehydrate, a hat or a cap, again it gets hot, and in the winter you may just want to dress for the weather because you will be in the elements. Forms of ID, you may be asked to present ID depending on where you're taking pictures from, more on that later. Also, some useful apps and websites, let's talk about that now. Before you head out, there are a couple of websites I recommend to help you get started flightradar24.com and spotterguide.net. Let's use spotterguide first. Okay, the first website, as I said, I recommend is spotterguide.net. This website's incredibly useful for helping you figure out where to take pictures at airports and all kinds of other information. Let's get started. First, you wanna do is come here and just search for Houston. That's where I live. So you can search for your city wherever or the closest city to you. And this is gonna return these results. Now, I'm interested in William P. Hobby Airport. This airport's smaller than George Bush, but it's actually closer to me. So I'm gonna select William P. Hobby. What that's gonna give us is a bunch of things. The first thing you'll see is a history of the airport. Pretty useful and interesting information, especially if you're an aviation enthusiast. And then you'll come across this rating system here. Now, this is very interesting because it's got movements, airline variety, photo locations, and weather, and it's a five airplane rating system. So we can see here movements is rated three out of five, airline variety is two out of five, photo is two, and weather is four out of five. Now, airline variety, Hobby Airport is a Southwest hub, and I would say 80, maybe 90% of all traffic coming in is Southwest and Southwest flies one class of airplane or one type of airplane, the 737. So you're gonna see a lot of 737s at this airport. There are many variants of that aircraft, but essentially Southwest is the major carrier at this airport. So that's why we got two out of five stars here. But that's okay. Um, I think the 737 is a great airplane and we will do our best to get the best shots we can. Moving down here, we have airport information, uh, the runway numbers and their lengths, as well as information here about the terminal. Ladders. I do not recommend that you use a ladder um, the first time that you come out to an airport because it's very distracting. It's another thing to keep track of. And a lot of places aren't too keen on photographers getting up on ladders near fences. So especially when you're starting out, I would say don't do this. Um, it's just not a good idea. The rest of this information is pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is also written, keep in mind, for people that may be just visiting the airport and want to get pictures before they have to go to another destination. So if it's a local airport to you, hopefully you know this information already about the restrooms and drinks and food. But regardless, this is very in interesting and useful information to have. Security information. This is important, guys. I would say make sure that you understand what the restrictions are at the airport you're going to. If you're not sure, call the airport manager or call airport security. Explain to them that you want to take pictures of aircraft and you're either going to tell the location you'd like to be at or ask them if they have suggested locations. It's okay and normal for airport security to ask for them to give you 
um, for you to give them, excuse me, your driver's license, your license plate number, your name, all this information. They just want to know who you are and how long you'll be there so that if security does stop you, they know what's going on. So again, keep in mind the regulations at the airports. That is ultimately your responsibility. This dialogue kind of explains that. And again, they nor I are liable for any um, infractions or incursions that you might make. So just be aware at all times what the policies are. Here's the runway usage information. Now, this is great because this will tell you typically what the airport uses each runway for. So you can see here runways 422 are used for arrivals. Doesn't matter from which direction. So every airport you'll find has a different flow of traffic. And as you continually visit the airport to get pictures, you'll start to kind of be aware of which way things are going. This is a great tool to help you do that or help you understand that. Now, this to me, oops, let's get back here. This to me is, is probably the most useful thing about spotterguide.net. I love this. These are actual spots on the runway where other people have taken photographs and they give you little notes about them. Now they're numbered, okay? And looking at this map, I think I'm gonna try spot nine, which is on a parking garage, and I'll show you that in a minute, and spot three, which is off to the side of this road over here. And what we're gonna do is we'll look at these two areas. Now, as you scroll down, you'll see, for example, for spot one, they give you where this location is, a description about it, what you can expect to see, what times are the best for taking pictures from this spot, and any other comments or notes. Additionally, they even recommend the focal length that you should be shooting with. So here you can see you can actually get as low as 50 millimeters on your lens and still get some pretty decent shots. These are, of course, example images of pictures taken at that exact spot. So hopefully you can start to see the tremendous value in this site and it is 100% free. So thank you to the guys who make spotterguide.net. I am no way affiliated or endorsed by them. I just think it's an awesome website. Moving along, we're going to try to do spot three as our second location. It's on Telephone Road. And you can usually get arrivals on runway four and some apron action as well. So we'll see if we can get that from late afternoon to sunset. All right. Um, again, the latter, I don't recommend it. Focal length, they recommend for spot three between 100 and 300 millimeters. I'm going to be shooting with a 200 millimeter lens. We'll see how that does. Here's some example shots. You can zoom in by clicking. And that's kind of a picture of the location. So then we'll do, uh, let's look at spot number nine. Because that one's interesting to me. It's kind of in the parking garage. So spot number nine is a red parking garage. And it's actually the top floor of the parking garage. Now there's a note here about new, a uh, newly constructed terminal part. We'll see if that interferes with our view. Um, and again, the focal length is between 200 and 400. I'm on the low end of that 200 millimeters. So we'll see what kind of shots we can get. These are shots that other people have posted. And like I said, see what we can do. Again, spotterguide.net, great website, great place to start your plane spotting adventure. Before we move off of spotterguide.net, it's also worth pointing out that there's a page called Useful Tips, and I'll link that in the description below. And this just basically summarizes pretty much everything you need to know about plane spotting along with some recommended websites to track aircraft. I'll be reviewing Flight Radar 24, but there's a couple of other websites I'd like to mention as alternatives as well. One of the websites I could recommend is planefinder.net, especially if you live in the EU, although this is available worldwide. Here you can see the sample interface, and again, this is planefinder.net. Another website I can recommend is flightaware.com. Again, useful for tracking arrivals and departures. You simply search by airport name or code, and you can see live views of all the active airplanes in the area. So that's flightaware.com. The other website we want to use is flightradar24. So that's flightradar24.com. It's a website as well as a great phone app. And this will actually allow us to track incoming and outcoming flights and know what's going to come into or out of the airport that we're going to be spotting at. So I'll go ahead and search for a hobby. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but if you're new to aviation, airports have a four-letter designation or four-letter airport code. For a hobby airport, it's K-H-O-U. And most airports in the U.S. will have the K designation followed by three letters or a combination of letters and numbers. And every airport in the world will have some kind of four-character 
identifier. So that's useful when you want to come back to this airport or in just other aviation related searching that you do. What we can see here is all these airplanes are actually live flights going on right now as I'm recording this. So you can click on any of these and get their flight information, their destination, all kinds of interesting stuff. However, for plane spotting, what we want to do is we want to check the arrivals and the departures. So let's go ahead and check arrivals. We'll start there. And this is the upcoming arrival board. Now, you want to look at this before you head out to the airport or when you get to the airport, because this will actually show you what airplanes are coming in, as well as the airline and type. So this is great if you want to set up shots or kind of anticipate what you're going to be seeing. And if you read a designation and you're not sure what kind of airplane that is, for example, a CRJ, you can click here and it'll show you a little picture of the aircraft. This is useful when you want to identify which airplane is landing when. And again, it's a great way to learn about different aircraft types. Same thing works for departures. And you can see this is actually, or these are actually um, upcoming flights at this airport. Now, Hobby is a Southwest hub. So a lot of the flights, the majority of the flights, I would say, are going to be Southwest. And Southwest essentially operates one type aircraft, 737. Now, there are many variants, but this is mainly the plane you're going to see at this airport. But that's okay. I like the Southwest Library, and I think it's a great airplane. So we are going to go and check that out. The next resource I recommend is liveatc.net. And while there is a website that you can use at home on your computer or laptop, the real point of this is to use it at the airport so you can listen to air traffic control. So let's take a look at the app instead of the website. So the Live ATC app is a lot more friendly than the website. Here it is. We have it opened up. I was already on the Houston channel, but I'll show you how to get there. Change. You go to USA, your country. Select your state. In this case, for me, it would be Texas. Then find your city, and it'll list every airport by city. So look for your city. There is Houston. There is Hobby. And the channel is up, so I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. And you'll actually hear a little bit of the ATC as it comes through. 118.7. 118.7, Southwest, uh, 3660. And that basically just goes on uh, the entire time. You also have diagram frequency and radar. I'll show you the diagram real quick. This is neat because it's the actual airport diagram. So you can look at the different runways, information about them, the, the taxiways. You'll hear the pilots and the controllers talking about which taxiway to turn off on. We're going to be shooting initially from Area 9, which is actually right here in this terminal. So that's liveatc.net. Highly recommend it. You should have it with you whenever you're at the airport. Now that we've gotten all our things together, let's head out. It's always exciting going to an airport to take pictures for the first time. Most airports have multiple runways, so part of this hobby is timing. Sometimes you may not be near the runway where the airplane you want to photograph is. Using Live ATC helps mitigate that, and over time, you'll begin to learn the best spots to photograph from depending on the air traffic and wind direction. Plane spotting is a hobby of patience and perseverance. Stick to it long enough and you'll get that amazing shot. All right, it's time to get started. Like I said earlier, I chose the parking garage. Let's see what we can get here. Okay, we're here at the top of the red parking garage. Gone ahead and found a pretty good spot to shoot from. Just over me is the airport environment and the uh, runway threshold. We'll try and get some shots and see how they come out. Let's see, I've got my shutter set to 250, aperture is 11, and here he goes. All right, we've gotten a couple of shots here, and uh, I like this spot. It's pretty easy to get to, pretty easy to shoot from. But today's air traffic, there's really not a lot going on except the takeoffs this way. So we're going to try to see if we can catch these guys landing. So we're going to move to another spot and see what those shots look like. So this is spot one, which is actually the best site here to get pictures at Hobby Airport. And we've got a uh, 737 about to land. Let's get some pictures of him and see what they look like.
So after spending a day out in the field taking photos, here are some settings you can use to help you get started. You want your aperture to be at 7.1 or higher. This will help ensure that the entire aircraft is in focus, especially if it's coming at an angle to you. For shutter speed, I recommend 1 200th or higher. This will ensure that you freeze the action on the airplane. As you get better with panning, you can lower that shutter speed to get that blurred background effect. But 1 200th is a good place to start. Finally, you want your ISO to be as low as possible. 100 is ideal, but in low light situations, you may be forced to go higher. Again, these settings are just the base point to help you get started. As you take pictures, experiment, and learn, you'll find what works for you, but I feel these are a good starting point. Plane spotting is a fun hobby that can provide you with many amazing images if you have the patience and a little bit of luck. Also, plane spotting isn't just for large commercial aircraft. There are over 15,000 airports in the U.S. alone, and typically the smaller the airport, the closer you can get to the aircraft. By reaching out to your nearest general aviation or GA airport, you can get access to all kinds of unique aircraft to photograph. I've gotten some of my best shots ever at GA airports. Additionally, chances are that there is a plane spotting club near you. By getting involved with local clubs, they can help you identify the best places to start spotting and help you grow in the hobby. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, it really helps out. I'll keep making more videos like this and if you have any questions, tips or feedback, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, keep the blue side up and see you next time.